For many of us, the start of spring can't come soon enough. The chance to soak up some warm sunshine, the promise of longer days, and putting away your winter coat until the end of the year. But let's not forget, spring brings more than just sunshine, it also brings pollen. You may have noticed that the Met Office provides a pollen forecast. This is because for one in five people in the UK, spring means it's time to break out not just your sunglasses, but also your trusty packet of tissues. Yep, the pollen season is here, and with it comes watery eyes, runny noses, and lots of sneezes. Achoo! But how does the Met Office produce pollen forecasts? What exactly is pollen? And how long does the pollen season last? Well, let's find out. What is pollen? Pollen mostly comes from wind-pollinated plants, which are usually dull and green because they don't need to attract insects with colour or scent. These plants produce large amounts of lightweight pollen that the wind carries over long distances. In contrast, brightly coloured flowers attract bees and other pollinators and produce less pollen, as they don't rely on the wind as much for fertilisation. The pollen itself is an extremely fine powder made up of tiny particles released by plants and trees as part of their reproductive cycle. There are a number of pollen types and depending on the time of year, the kind of pollen in the air will be different. Pollen allergies. Pollen can cause significant irritation and inflammation in people who are allergic to it. Pollen can be inhaled by humans and animals so it can even affect your pets. For those with an allergy, pollen triggers the antibody immunoglobulin E, which creates mucus and leads to symptoms such as congestion and sneezing. Hay fever is the most common name for a pollen allergy and is mostly caused by grass pollen, although other pollens can also trigger symptoms. These symptoms can include frequent sneezing, a runny or blocked nose, itchy eyes and an itchy throat, mouth, nose and ears. The symptoms are caused when the immune system reacts to the pollen in the body to produce histamine and other chemicals. There are around 30 different types of pollen that cause hay fever and it is possible to be allergic to more than just one type. Depending on the time of year, the type of pollen in the air will be different. In the UK, the pollen season can start as early as January and end as late as November. Tree pollen occurs first, typically around late March to mid-May, and this affects around 25% of hay fever sufferers. Next we have grass pollen, which affects nearly all sufferers, with the season lasting from mid-May until July. There is also weed pollen. Now this can be released at any time during the season, but typically occurs around the end of June to September. However, did you know that pollen seasons start and end at different times depending on where you live? For example, there's a later start and a shorter season in the north of the UK where, generally, there is less pollen. Regions inland also have higher counts than around the coast, and urban areas have lower counts than the countryside. However, pollen can combine with air pollution in city centres and bring on hay fever symptoms. How does the weather affect pollen? Of course, the weather has a big part to play with rain, temperature, wind and sunshine all affecting how much pollen will be produced and how much it will be dispersed. Any rainfall causes a marked decrease in pollen concentrations in the air, but the time and amount that it rains during the day is very important. For example, early heavy and prolonged rain is likely to keep counts low all day, whereas rain in the afternoon will have less of an impact. For grass pollen, a maximum temperature between 18 to 28 degrees Celsius could give a high count if it's a dry day with low humidity and a gentle breeze. However, trees respond best when the temperature range is slightly lower, between 13 to 15 degrees Celsius. If the temperature rises above 28 degrees Celsius, then all pollen levels decrease. This is because high temperatures can cause the pollen grains to dry out or become less viable, Plants also tend to produce less pollen when the weather is excessively hot as their growth cycles can be stressed by extreme heat, leading to a reduction in pollen production. If several warm days occur in a row, the heat can lead to a faster dispersal of pollen into the air and once it's all been released, the supply can be exhausted. With no new pollen being produced immediately, pollen levels can drop significantly or even run out. This effect can vary depending on the type of plant, but in general, very hot weather tends to signal a decrease in pollen production. 
And what about wind? Well, then it all gets a bit more complicated. If the wind is too light, the pollen will barely get off the ground to be dispersed. But if it's too windy, the pollen gets blown further afield and thins out significantly. Different types of pollen will need different wind speeds for ideal dispersion, but birch pollen, for example, needs moderate to high winds. The amount of daylight or the photo period is also crucial to pollen production because of photosynthesis. If there's a particularly cloudy spell of weather, then plants and trees will produce less pollen because they are getting less light. The pollen forecast. Did you know that the Met Office produces a five-day pollen forecast during the pollen season? So how do we put the forecast together? Well, across a number of sites around the UK, people collect pollen using something called a burkard trap, which contains a spindle with sticky paper wrapped around it. This rotates slowly and as air is drawn through the surrounding spindle, pollen particles are left on the paper and then the particles can be counted using a microscope. We then combine pollen observations to weather observations and feed them into our forecasting models, taking into account rainfall, timing of rain, wind strength, expected sunshine and temperature over the period. Combining all of these factors helps us produce a five-day pollen forecast. Tips for coping with a pollen allergy. It's difficult to completely avoid pollen, but following our pollen forecast, if you do suffer from hay fever, can help you plan ahead and take action to prevent or limit the effects of pollen. You can even receive alerts from our app when pollen levels are high. Other things that could help include reducing your time outside when there are high pollen levels, especially if someone is outside cutting the grass, showering and changing clothes when you come indoors after being outside, keeping windows closed, and wearing wraparound sunglasses to stop pollen getting into your eyes. Stay up to date by subscribing to the Met Office YouTube channel and checking our website for the latest updates. If you enjoyed this video, you may be interested in watching another explainer similar to this one, but all about UV and how to stay safe out and about in the sunshine. Give it a watch and be sure to comment if there's a future topic that you'd like us to look at.